you're an artist? Come on up. Let's meet you. Don't be shy. Come on. Want the eyes point where you want eyes. Let's put a mouth on that. Where do you want your eye? Point. You want it here, there, right there? Watch this. Take that. Take that. Ah, you're going to love this. Let's push it in there. You push the other one right in that little hole. Push it in even more. There you go. Look at that. Straighten them up. The clay. And when you're actually moving, the same way an artist sketches. What you're doing is sketching in clay right now. It's the same thing I'm doing. This is really a sketch. So. How about putting some horns on them? Why don't you put some horns? Take some clay and just kind of roll out a horn. Here, just like roll that. You can put like one horn there or something like that. And grab some more in as much as you want there. You're doing great. Grab some more clay, Shai. See, you see what you're doing. Yeah, I see. You already you, you know what you're up to there, don't you? Hey. Okay. Hello, everybody. Ah, sure, Thank please. You. Yes. Right now, uh, one of the key sculptors on Jurassic Park, the man responsible for sculpting Thank the raptors, oh, okay. yes. is teaching kids how to sculpt. Don't worry about being too symmetrical. Here in the, uh, in nature, nothing is actually symmetrical. So it's okay if, it's, if one is a little bit different. Than hey, the everybody. Other. Welcome to Kamikaze. You having fun so far? Say yeah. yeah. Awesome. Right now, Chris Swift, uh, Hollywood creature effect. How you doing over there? Look at that. I'm going to cut this head off and put that one on there. That looks better than this one. Yeah. Cyrus looks like a yeah. Cyrus looks like a like a I know that it's really weird. Yeah. No, I wasn't hearing it. Well I'm down. There's a lot of I love skills and stuff. Uh Jesus. So are you a of having a non-finished sculpture with detail on it and then you can't go back and reform it because then you have to ruin all your detail to do that so very bad very bad he's an evil personifi personification of your own embodiment of consciousness and guilt
Are you going to put a beard on him? Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, like a little goatee. He's got little hangy things down there. Would car carve an apple or skin an apple and then get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then when you get all the way through it like that, watch. Then you can take it and then you can bend it and then you can bend it into where you want it to. See, See now it's a now it's a curled little horn, like, a, like an antelope's horn. So if you, do your, if you do your lines first, your detail first, then you don't have to sit there and try to do detail around something that's so ornately, ornately curved. And then you can just go in and finish it, but something like Kiri, the, uh, the beautiful Navi, that was Chris Swift who created her face. That Gorgeous Navi woman. And today he's teaching kids how to sculpt. This is one of the key techniques used in creature creation. You sculpt your character in miniature, uh, and it helps the producers see the design before they say yes or no. So I want to talk to you kids a little bit. Shiro, what do you, what's going on here? Uh, I don't know. You um, don't know? That's okay. That's good. Because you know what? It looks really good, and you don't have to know. That, makes, that means what you're doing is inert. You know what that means, inert? That means it's natural. You're not having to struggle to do it. It's actually something that just comes from your system. So and how, how did you get assigned to the Raptor team? Uh, the Raptor team was actually... Your wonderful father was looking... Had an interesting idea on Jurassic Park, very different than we've done other films. And that was is that because there was a multi there was multiple dinosaurs going to be in the movie, he decided that he wanted a key a key on each dinosaur, so it was going to be their dinosaur and see it through. Um, he had picked uh, wonderful sculptor Mike Tursick to do the T Rex. Shannon Shea was doing a small Triceratops, a baby Triceratops. Joey Orozco was doing the actual large Triceratops. So what so. Chris is talking about here is how he was given the assignment to be the key artist on all the raptors on Jurassic Park. Uh, Chris sculpted the original raptor maquette and then uh, sculpted the full-size raptors from Jurassic Park. This man right here. Uh, he also went on to uh, sculpt Natiri from Avatar. That's uh, his, the character you see in that movie was sculpted by Chris Swift before the digital artist. Uh, digitized it. Uh, the Iron Man uh, series, this man has played a pivotal role in the art of that, and today he is here to share some of... Most of what I was dealing with, so all the liquid guys, and trying to sculpt liquid in, in, a, in the form that it came out to be in the movie was a very difficult th challenge to do. So I guess I would say probably that was bigger than anything, and that was probably the most scrutinized by Jim was how do we actually sculpt liquid and to appear as liquid, yet chrome and get it to move and whenever you have anything chrome, chrome, it becomes a very hard thing to make it a flexible entity, which it had to be. So I think that was uh, probably the hardest bit on the whole movie. And at that time, if you remember, CG really was not a big player in the, that was one of the movies that really kind of started the whole idea, and then Jurassic Park, of course, took it over. Like in that sense, would be to use that kind of technique to do it. So I, uh, I really give Jim a lot of credit for letting us go that route and, and do it that way. How about working on Avatar? Uh, what was the pressure like knowing that you had to sculpt Natiri and, and be hugely responsible for her final appearance in the movie? Um, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know if uh, pressure would be the right word. Uh, Avatar was one of those projects where we, it was a five-year process. So to be honest with you, I was designing for a year with Jim. Well, show me what you want and then I'll refine it. I'll, I'll turn it into what you, know, you want it to be. So that was the uh, interesting part of that process. 
and talk talk to us a little bit about um, the process of turning. Uh, I am so sorry. I'm forgetting her name. The actress who played Zoe. Uh, Zoe. Zoe yes. Sandel. Zoe. Yes. Uh, Zoe was so wonderful. She was a really, really, really great person to work around. Uh, actor. And uh, I have to say that it was a, an enjoyable experience because she was so excited about the whole project. And she really, really just kind of stepped out, stepped out of almost nowhere and just literally just ran with that role and did such a great job, I have to say. Um, now, didn't you guys start with a life cast of her? And Even though he knew that the, the final result would be mostly digital and it was never going to be mainly just the size alone was wrong on a human being so we could never use the human beings anyway but what he did want was he wanted the sculpture to be the a exact replication of what he was looking for so he could scan it and then give it to the digital so it was already a done piece so he did not trust the the digital process in the sense that the just giving to them to make it and he he felt that was going to be a fighting process so he'd rather be happy with the design three-dimensionally in front of him and then let that be scanned and give it to digital so they can then m build their model and use that as their model. So that's kind of the way it was done. It's kind of great. People think of Avatar as... It's all about... But yeah, but practical effects are cheaper. That's true. Practical so effects are cheaper. So if it comes down to money, we win. That's true. Except for the fact that if their, if their end result is going to be digital anyway, they won't want to do a practical effect and a digital effect. So they'll go straight for digital right off the bat. But in the sense of, you'll have a lot of directors who really want to work. We just did the movie Pac Rim, Pacific Rim, with Guillermo del Toro. Has and anyone seen Pacific Rim? Raise your hand. In all anyone. Of We're talking about the creation of Pacific Rim right now. And the, the suit. Those Thermians. I know you were instrumental in the Thermians. And you designed Ceres. I did. I did design Ceres. Let's talk about and, your Ceres uh, design. And the Robin Thermians. Sachs, the wonderful actor Robin Sachs, who I'm afraid has passed away from us. Um, the movie was great because it was one of the few scripts I ever actually read and laughed out loud when I actually read the script, which is a really, really tough thing to do um, for me. And I just loved the project. And it was just a really, really, really wonderful project to be involved with, I have to say. Um, we never had any intentions that the movie was going to come out as funny and it's kind of, at least I think, as good as it did. But uh, the experience of working on it was just an amazing experience. And uh, let's hear him in. They glued that whole body on him from head to toe. He was glued in. And because of that, Tim actually hated the whole thing. And he said he swore to me that he would never, ever do a makeup job where he was actually a creature again. And uh, when we were doing Galaxy Quest and we were trying to find out the director, Dean, was... Uh, came up to me one day and actually told me, he goes, he goes you'll, uh, you'll never guess who we got to play Ceres. And I go, who'd you get? And he tells me, Tim Curry. <laughs> I was like, what? He goes, yeah, Tim Curry's uh, going to be playing. I go, have you talked to Tim about this? And he goes, no, we're going to surprise him. He's, he's on his way in right now. He's flying in, and uh, we're going to surprise him with the designs and all of that and the great sculptures and all that that you guys have done and that you did for him. I have no interest in the person. So after you get, after you get past the initial looks, stage then it just becomes boring there's nothing nowhere else to go with it unless the character themselves are interesting so the character is actually all about that it's all about trying to find the voice of what what it is the th the character you're making what what is the voice what is it what does it do how does it act what are the things that make it who it is and something interesting opposed to just being another good-looking thing that just bores you after about 15 minutes of seeing it. Neutral when far away, but then angry or evil when close up? Awesome. Well, the key to figuring out any character is to figure out what's the main thing that motivates them. It was, uh, they would 
start with a uh, basically a, a metal frame, mm -hmm. and then they, uh, I think it was plywood and then styrofoam. Yep. And then they would finally wind up with clay, and they just do half the car. <clears throat> they just just sculpt half the car. Wow. And then they had a they had a digital machine that would come and touch, and then it would you know make the other half. Wow, interesting. So, and then what era was that? Like what year would that this, be? This was probably like 20 years ago. Oh, so that was even before the digital era that we know of today. Yeah, it was two footer. Yeah, it's about, it's only oh, about okay, that tall. Okay. It's real yeah, small. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, it's completely in its package still. It's never been built. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. It's really, brings back yeah, great he memories. Hated, he hated Mickey Mouse, so he was like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anti Mickey Mouse. So it certainly was. Yeah, that was good times. I remember that. As a kid, I used to love working with those model kits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first model was the Munsters coach, I remember. Yeah, I, got I so, remember that. I got so discouraged the glue took forever to dry. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. The tester's glue, and yeah. you'd get high as, high yeah, as a kite yeah, off that yeah, stuff. Up, it was crazy, yep. Yeah. It would just get you crazy. Even yeah. if you didn't want to, it would just get right in your system. So you went with all of the, the details the of details. that, but... Uh, um, our shop is capable of doing almost any size, but it wouldn't make sense because our machines, unless they're... Keep up to about 20 inches in house. And why are the, why are the like, uh, I'm Polyjet technology, we utilize FDM technology, we use nanocure materials on jewelry type machines, and then we'll also go out of house, like I said, for SLA technology, where we don't need as much detail, like in armor, but it saves us some money, and it's actually a pretty fast process to get back into the casting world. Yeah. Okay. I, I was just curious, probably then they're just not taking the time on, 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 on the... Exactly. I mean, once it gets out of their hands... You, you don't know what's happening once it leaves that, uh, that master pattern sense, if you will. You know, it gets handed over. Like, for instance, when we do a lot of our collectibles, we hand over to who we're contracted to. They hand over to China for the production run. So you have no idea what's going to come back. Oh, and I go, oh. they were just, you know, the, the, they were just so horrible, you know, the copies of the, of the characters, you know. And I, I remember hanging them back up on the, on the, uh, on the shelf, you know, because they were, they were just like so not accurate, you know, and, and you know, hanging, uh, hanging thousands of dollars back up on the shelves, you know, just because, and now they're just unbelievable. Oh my gosh. It's just like, I can't believe. Yeah. They're like. And what's, and what's funny too is at our shop, a lot of people will, will buy the actual collectibles that we work on and like day one on delivery, what we'll do is we'll go right up to an artist like Chris or Trevor Hensley and have them do touch up for us. And bring it back is how we remembered it leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I'm so glad it's gotten so much out of Absolutely. Whoa, Sean, that's good. What are you doing? It's like a double wrap. Oh, it's a girl? Oh, okay. Uh, just a random. Random. How are you doing over there? Look at that. What a great job.
Exactly. That's it. Out of that one. As a matter of fact, like this one here, I'm particular, I'm not quite sure what I want to do, so I'm doing two different sides here. This side is different than the other side over there, so. And then I'll kind of get an idea of which one I kind of want to go with, and then I'll match the other one to that. You see, this one's got more of a skull skull eye here and things like that that I'm working on. A lot of the other stuff, it just, yeah, it just it's yeah, like Play-Doh. Yeah, you might as well just buy Play-Doh. Yeah. So, and, and, and what happens, they get frustrated and then they just quit. Yeah. So, yeah. yep, so it's really, it's what's really, what's the name of this play? Chavant. What is it? Chavant. How do you, how do you spell it? C-H-A-V-E, or V-A-N-T, that's it, V-A-N-T, there you go. Like Savant, like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's different. Uh, there's different too. There's medium and there's, there's grade. grades. They, they actually have. They have have to have a lot more than that. They they do industrial clays as well. So they have the really super hard stuff. That's like you know, and they'll have everything from wax base to. Is this medium? Or? This is a medium. Just gets all over you. So, yeah. but it was a better clay. I preferred. I preferred the clay. Yeah. It's just all the problematic things about it weren't very good so now do you ever put any armatures coming out of this part now yeah i would usually like uh, use metal wires yeah i would usually i would i would go and put wires for horns and things like that because it'll never hold up trying to mold yeah. them is just going to go to hell yeah. heck sorry but uh yeah, I would usually always do that. Like I said, this is just kind of a study. It's, it's not meant to do anything other than just uh, give me a design essence. I mean, this is one of those things that if I'm doing this for a movie, I'll sculpt this probably about eight times or nine times. Really? Different is uh, one of the few that just knew exactly what he was looking yeah. for. And he had a really good value of being able to tell you, tell you what he was looking for, yeah. which a, lo a, lot of the, a lot of the ones I work with, don't, they're not. They know what they're looking for, but they can't tell you what they're looking yeah. for. So it's a very fighting process of trying to find it. Would he tell you with a, with a, like a sketch or just like... Verbal? No, he would uh, usually just a verbal kind of, uh, you know, you'd start something like this and he would go, he would look at it and go, okay, uh, this is great. You're 70% there. Here's the 30% I'm not seeing or here's the 30% that's not working. This snout is too short. I want it elongated. So I want it longer. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, and he's really good with that kind of thing. She uh, does she do a lot of art? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Draw she's or she's mostly? Yeah. Mostly drawing. No, she's. No, I was. I was telling her actually. What What's great about it is is just the just the things she does and the things she was explaining to me. She's inert. Yeah. Um, her her whole process is very inert, which means she's not really struggling to try to teach herself. It's it's automatic, it's ingrained, it's natural. So it's just a raw, natural state. And if you really, I, I highly recommend. Portion. this one's in gate, so homework's real easy too. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Monster clay is really great. And it's so funny that you, you mentioned that because uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we were kind of under the, under the guise that Monster clay had kind of disappeared. And uh, it did for a little while it and, did. They re and they resurfaced with a new um, yeah, and I have to say, we just recently found out uh, some, some guys brought it back into the shop, and I was like, I used to love Monster Clay a lot. Um, and it was like, whatever happened to that? It was so, it was so you know, such a good, great clay, and we could never really find out the whole technique, and then Chavant just kind of came out and, you know, just started kind of taking over everything. So that's usually subjected to whatever the shop's buying at the time. If I'm doing a sculpture, I'll order what about 200, 300 pounds to to move them around, and it was awful. When you're in a rush trying to get things done at night, and there's only two of you there, and you try to lift something, it would just literally break your back, and it was an awful experience. Are 
Are you in? Okay, have you walked in? Have you walked in? Oh, beautiful work. Oh, thank you, thank you. Look to the, if you're, uh, look for three giant signs hanging from the ceiling. One says Stanley's Mega Museum. Come right there, that's where we are. Okay. I got a quiz for you. Yes, yes. How did the Incas, you know, you see... We would do exactly what we would, we would exactly normally do exactly in the, today. Yeah. But the funny thing is, is that they, had, they didn't have nearly the, the tools and the, the abilities yeah. and, the, you know, yeah. obviously the technology was not, not there with them. The thing but, I haven't figured out is how Easter Island has gotten some of those... Yeah, you know, the heads. The, the heads of Easter Santa. Island. That was always such a great thing when I, was, when I was young, just trying to figure out how that... I know. What's really interesting is is that you know the, how the the stone itself was only on the other side of the island, so they couldn't have done it on on they couldn't have sculpted them in place. Yeah, so exactly. moving them would have been such a labor labor intensive task. Oh, the things we don't know. like wow mind-blowing how you been yeah i'm oh, doing all right just busy at work you know doing the same thing it's a good thing man you're on your way soon it'll be over and you'll be out there in the world impressing many <laughs> you will <laughs> My friend, how are we doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. I know she's 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 kicking my butt. It's a good thing our bosses aren't here. They'd hire her. I'd be fired, and she'd be hired. <laughs> oh no. Hey, later. I'll be over there in just a little bit. How is it? Superhero Spider-Man. He rocks. Who's that? Spider-Man and who? Isn't she great? Nature. The mouth should open up, the eyes should blink, and so that when I'm sculpting, I'll work that into the design. It's creepy to see the teeth on the side open. Yeah, really yeah, like a through of a skull. Oh, thank you so much.
Test. Test. There we go. How many of you have seen uh, Jurassic Park? Raise your hand. Anyone here seen that movie? Uh, you want to meet the guy who actually sculpted all the raptors and uh, was instrumental in that movie? Well, he's sitting right here. His name is Chris Swift. Uh, not only did he sculpt the raptors. Hey. Hey, buddy. How are you? This is my son, Rowan. And I'm going to say hello to him. So, Chris, it's all you. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit when you have a second after you hug Debbie. Wow, that's my sister, man. <laughs> sexy, calling my sister sexy. Uh, so tell us what you're, where you are in the sculpture now, Chris. Let's turn on your mic pack. Let's make sure you're on. Give it a sec. Um. All right. Try again. No, no, no. Uh, it was me. It was my fault. Turn that back on. We need. It. We must hear you. I'm at the. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Test. test. At all. We're gonna. We're gonna figure this out. Sorry, Chris. Nice.
Hey, Johnny, what time? Whoa, what happened there? Testing, testing. Hey, guys. Uh, so how many of you have seen Jurassic Park? Raise your hand if you've seen Jurassic Park. How many of you like raptors? Uh, by a show of applause, if you like raptors. Well, we are here today with one of the men uh, who is very key in creating those raptors. This gentleman to my right, Christopher Swift. Uh, brilliant. Brilliant creature effects artist. He's been in this business for over 20 years now, working on some of the biggest movies uh, that Hollywood has ever put out, including uh, the, the entire Jurassic Park series, uh, Terminator 2, uh, and now for the last five years he's been with Legacy Effects, uh, building Iron Men and working on the Avengers. And Did you work on Pacific Rim as well, Chris? Did. Pacific Rim. So he's one of the best in the business, and he is here sharing uh, some of his techniques for creating characters. Today he is working on a character creature bust, a maquette, uh, using Chavant clay, which is an oil-based clay. And he's got a bunch of kids who have surrounded his table. We're gonna wrap it up. Yeah? I don't remember that. No, you weren't there. We were not there. Did you get shots of this, guys? Oh, John. This, this is a good install. I'm wrapping this up. So. 